What is Google Cloud Storage? Hey everyone, Garth Jolte from CBT Nuggets. In this micro nugget, we're going to look at Google Cloud Storage, which is a product in the Google Cloud platform that allows us to store our data in the cloud. We'll cover what it is, some of the things that we can do with it, some of the tools that we can use to interact with it, and at the end, I'll give you a demo and show you how we can put data in Google Cloud Storage. Google Cloud Storage allows us to put our data in the cloud. And one of the first questions you see out there is, well, don't we already have cloud storage solutions in Google Drive and Dropbox and some of these other products? And the answer is yes, but those are really meant for consumers, personalized storage. They can put their documents up there and interact with them directly. Google Cloud Storage can do all of those things. We could certainly use it as a document store or to place images or whatever we want, but it's more than that. It's also for large-scale data. It's a place for our applications to put their data, for other products and services to tap in and utilize that data. So it's an integration point, it's a staging area, it's everything. So it's reliable, scalable, and consistent data storage in Google's data center. We'll talk about what those three things mean when we go over the features. Let's talk about the components. We have projects, buckets, objects, and access control lists. And essentially how this works is a project contains buckets and a bucket contains objects. ECLs are the mechanism we use to control access to our buckets and objects. Buckets and objects have independent access control lists. And an access control list really just contains two things, scope and permission. Scope are the users and groups that have access to these objects. Permission is the kind of actions that they can perform, read, write, full control. We have a nice collection of tools that give us a variety of ways to interact with GCS. We have the Google Cloud Developers Console, a, a very simple web UI that gives us basic administration and management of our buckets and objects. We have a command line utility that comes with the Google Cloud SDK known as GSUtil, which gives us a more advanced and powerful way to manage all aspects of Google Cloud Storage. And then we can tap into it programmatically. We have a couple of REST APIs and we have client libraries that wrap those REST APIs so you can easily tap into it from your programming language of choice. Some features to highlight, of course, we're in Google's network, so things are extremely fast, especially if you use other Google Cloud Platform products. If you keep it internal on their network, and do things like take your compute engine logs, put them into Google Cloud Storage, and analyze them from BigQuery, all that's gonna happen inside of Google's network. It's gonna be extremely fast. Strong consistency. What this means is that if we were to upload a file into a bucket in GCS, as soon as we get that success message that the operation is completed, we would expect to see that object in its completed state. That's really what strong consistency means. It means that it's an atomic operation. We're either going to see the object in its entirety or not at all. There's not gonna be any kind of partial or corrupted objects. Once it's up there, it's up there and you're gonna be able to read it right after that right. Another cool feature here is regional buckets. We can choose where our buckets live. Currently we can choose between the United States, Europe and just recently announced and now available, Asia. So we can place our data closest to where our users are. And a really nice uh, reliability and high availability feature here is that as soon as our data is uploaded, as soon as we get that success message, our data has already been replicated across the data centers in that region. We can provide authenticated access to our data via the browser, where users will log in with their Google account, and as long as they have permission to an object, they'll be able to download it directly from the browser. We can also provide anonymous access to our data through what are known as signed URLs, time-bombed URLs for short-lived access to our data. Another great time and cost-saving feature is resumable uploads. If we were to upload a large file and lose our connection in the middle of it, rather than have to start over, whenever we got that connection back, we can resume exactly where we left off. So this will obviously save us in the time, but also it'll save us bandwidth costs because we've already, we've already paid for the first half of the file from Google's eyes. A very interesting experimental feature here is object change notification, which allows an application to put a watch request on a bucket, a webhook on a bucket. So if, if a file were to get added or changed or deleted from a bucket, that bucket could actually call back to notify the application of that event. So that allows for some very powerful two-way communication between our buckets and our applications. And last but certainly not least, easy integration with the other Google Cloud Platform products. This is what makes GCS the middleman, that integration point, because we can use it from Compute Engine to store our snapshots or our persistent disks. We can use it from App Engine to store our blob data or our binaries. We can use it from Cloud SQL as a staging area to import and export our databases. And we can use it as a staging area for BigQuery to process, analyze, or transform our big data. If we look at our dedicated server gaming solution use case, we can see that cloud storage is used uh, for a number of different reasons. It's used, number one, to store the game binaries and game assets that are utilized by these compute engine instances. These compute engine instances also upload their logs and game data to Google Cloud Storage, so MapReduce 
can process and transform that data that gets ingested into BigQuery for analysis. So this is a great big picture just to show exactly how Google Cloud Storage is a middleman. It's a, it's a staging area and an integration point for all these other Google Cloud Platform products and services. How about a demo? Let's see how to work with Google Cloud Storage from the web UI and from the command line. So first, let's bring up the web UI. So here's the cloud console. We're logged in. I chose the project GCP Nuggets. From here, we can choose Cloud Storage, and we can easily create a bucket. Now, let me show you how to create a bucket through the command line. Once you download and install the Google Cloud SDK, you'll need to log in. So we'll do a G Cloud auth login. And that's just going to ask for permission here. So we're going to give it permission. Say, yep, sounds good. And close out of this. And now if we head back here to our console, we can enter our project ID, which we have right back here, GCP Nuggets. And now we're good to go. So now that we're logged in, we can use GSUtil to manage our cloud storage project. So what I'm going to do here is first create a bucket. And bucket names do need to be unique across all of Google Cloud Storage. Object names need to be unique within a bucket. So let's do a GSUtil MB for make bucket. And the bucket we're going to make here, let's just call this, how about GCP Nugs dash logos. I've got uh, a directory containing a few logos that we'll upload into here. So we'll hit enter there. And that is going to create the bucket. And once that's created, we should be able to come back in here, reload this page, and see our bucket inside of the storage browser. There it is. Now you can do simple administration tasks here within the, uh, the developer's console just by putting a check here. You can see you can delete it. You can manage bucket permissions. And if you go into it, you can actually upload objects into this bucket. If you choose the object, then you can manage permissions and do all that basic administration stuff here through the console. So I've got a couple of images on the local file system here. We have the GCP logo and the CBT logo. We're going to take these images and upload them into this bucket using GSUtil. So let's bring the command line back up here. We can do a GSUtil CP and then the path to those files. I'm already in the logos directory, so we'll just do a star.png and then the path to our bucket, GS colon couple of forward slashes. And the name of our bucket was GCP Nugs dash logos. That's it. That should take those images, send them up into our bucket and see how fast that was. It's already done. Now we can refresh this and we should see both of them in there. So we could easily manage this from the web UI here, delete object permissions, metadata. We could share it publicly if we choose the link. Here is one of the request endpoints, one of the many styles of request endpoints that we can use, storage.googleapis.com forward slash bucket forward slash object. And there it is, shared with the world. So let's delete these. All right, deleted. And now we could head back into here and we could remove the buckets. We can do a GSUtil RB. You can do an RM to remove objects and then just the name of the bucket. Just like so, hit enter, that's gonna delete it, and we're back to where we started. And now if we head back here, hit storage browser, reload it, our bucket is gone. In the CBT micro nugget, we answered the question, what is Google Cloud Storage? We saw that it's a product in the Google Cloud platform that allows us to store our data in the cloud. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.